I've called a word the Shockley School Board meeting of April 13th. Sarah, can you please call the roll? Berg. Here. Allen. Here. McKeon. Good evening. Romanski. Here. Swanson. Tucker. Here. And Bowerman. Yes, ma'am. So this evening we're going to start uh, with something we actually introduced at our last board meeting where we're talking about the good news of Shakti. And instead of me having to listen to me recite all those things, I think we're going to share a video. Is that right, Yeah, Crystal? we're going to show a video yep, that Great. we created on our points of pride in the district. All right, here we go. Shakopee is an exciting place to be when you set the expectation high. Your kids are going to meet it there. Metro-wide, you're not going to see somebody who has a greater increase in the percentage of kids proficient in shock people in math and in reading. We launched a five-year planning effort to help us take ourselves to the next level academically. There are many opportunities. In the skills they need to be college and career ready. Our nursing program at Shakopee High School is one of those examples. We want them out in the community. We want them to see what are the places that employ nursing assistants. We want them to be able to see what do they look like. We want to expose them to all the different facilities we have in our own communities. Kids are going deeper in their learning and because of that we're able to go deeper in relationship with kids. That's a win for the Shakopee schools. Project Lead the Way is a nationally recognized STEM program, so science, technology, engineering, mathematics. I love these experiences because this is what makes school fun to me. We are trying to stay at the forefront of trying to get students ready for jobs that exist, and more importantly, we're training students for jobs that don't exist yet. This is the class that I get excited for. I get to go work and have fun while doing it. When we bring technology into the classroom, it allows us to personalize what we do and meet kids where they are. There you go. You see how that's a nice straight line now? All of our buildings in Shakti work really hard to make our environments welcoming and inclusive for all students so that all students feel respected and safe at school. They're inclusive with finding ways to incorporate our special ed kids into real world activities that are school based and getting them out in the community as well. <laughs> In Shakopee, we're an E-12 school district, and the E stands for early learners. What's unique about an early childhood setting is that we have the opportunity to serve children, but we also have the opportunity to serve their parents. And so when you have that built-in partnership right at the site, it's really exciting. The district has a long history of being fiscally responsible by refinancing our debt, much like a homeowner refinances their debt, that will save over $10 million over the next 10 years to reduce taxes. We've also received a number of awards from the state over the last three years. We've moved our bond rating from what it was to a Moody's rating of AA2. And we're fortunate to be in a position where the district has supported things that a lot of school districts don't have. Shockley Schools offers a great foundation in music through the general music programming in our elementary schools and that expands into both band and choir starting in fifth and sixth grade. The real deal will take care of you forever now. I've seen a lot of kids grow in the theater program and, and I'm, I'm really delighted to have the opportunity to work with them and, and watch them grow. The most important thing looking to the future is providing opportunities for the families and, and students in our community. There is a lot of success. There's momentum. Sabre Pride is just an intense loyalty to our teams and just a pride in the success and hard work of all of our programs. People are coming to shock for a reason. And I think schools are a big part of that. I saw the community, and I saw the school system, and I realized not only was it a good place for me professionally, but it was a great place to raise my family, too. We are Well done. <laughs> Lots to be proud of the shock of you. Nice job, Crystal. To you and whoever else. All right, let's continue with the agenda. Uh, do we have any visitors this evening who would like to speak to the board? And if not, all right. So then I will look for a, a motion to accept the agenda or consider the agenda as presented. Do we have any additions for a trial? So I'm gonna check with you, I don't believe so. No, we don't. Okay, I have a motion to accept the agenda as offered. So moved. Second. All right, thank you. Any other comments? 
All those in favor of accepting the agenda as presented, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. We'll move on to consent. We have no changes to that at this point, so I'm looking for a motion to accept consent as presented. So Second. Thank you. Any other comments or discussion? None. All those in favor of accepting consent, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? None. Consent. Consent is accepted. Just move on to trade six. It's already before that do it. Uh, we'll move on to a communications update, Crystal. Thank you for talking to us about that. business board meeting before um, the May 5th referendum, 22 days until May 5th, so that getting that number in everyone's head is, makes it more real. Um, so I wanted to go through some of the progress that we've made so far since the last um, board meeting. A newsletter was sent to all of our district residents in early April, and that included um, some referendum information as well as some um, stories about the district. Um, Registered voters will receive a notice of polling location shortly. Um, that should be <coughs> out soon. Um, an e-newsletter also went out following the um, actual paper newsletter, and um, that went out to all district parents, and I guess I should have said, and our subscribers as well, and our education forward teams. Um, so that also included information about the referendum. We finished staff information sessions, which we did at all the buildings with um, Rod, Nancy, JP, and I. Um, taking questions from staff and giving a little presentation about the referendum. So we finished those in all 12 buildings. Um, public information sessions, we just finished um, the second of two. And one was in the morning and one at night. The one at night was pretty well attended. The one in the morning, a little less. But some great questions and some, some positive feedback about um, everything that's happening. I'm continuing to respond to questions via email and voicemail. Um, I've gotten about 40 emails so far that we've responded to. Um, so people have just a variety of different types of questions that we've responded to, and probably just a handful of voicemails um, that we're continuing to respond to, and we'll continue to for the next three weeks. Um, building communications, um, each building has a communications plan that was developed during our building team training, um, and that includes a, quite a bit um, of referendum information sessions at each building. Um, so if you'd like to schedule that, I can get you guys that. But um, each building will be doing some sessions. Um, building team check-in meeting in a few weeks. So we'll um, have some members of each building team, the principal. They'll tell us what, what's been going on um, and then what, what we can expect in the last couple weeks from each building site team. Um, and each building is doing some weekly communication to parents and principals. And I wanted to include, because I just couldn't resist the picture of the teachers in there, um, the SEA just got new shirts and that's what's on the back. So the, all the teachers wore them on Friday. Um, so really cool. <coughs> um, to look ahead, we'll do another e-newsletter right before the vote on May 5th, and that'll include some referendum information. Um, we'll continue to um, promote the videos that are on our, for our referendum, but also the video you guys just watched. Um, that doesn't really have to do with the referendum, but it's um, a good point of pride for the district. Um, I'll continue to support the building teams and whatever sorts of materials, support they need um, as we move forward. There'll be emails and voicemails to parents and staff reminding them to vote um, in the days before the uh, referendum. And then for those who want to learn more, our website is still up and running with lots of information on there now. Um, the referendum email, referendum at shockfee.k12.mn.us, and then the voicemail, which is 496-1501. We'll continue to move along as we close in our 20 days. So, any questions? Questions for Crystal? Just maybe a comment. I'm, I am meeting with some of the, um, a couple of community members with SACS, and uh, I'm meeting with them on Tuesday evening, the 21st. It will be a very short presentation with the SACS. I think they, is it the PIP group? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. 
Insurance and Partnership. Or something. I guess so. Okay. And then uh, Janny Hennis and uh, Pat Paws are going to also be in attendance. So my piece is the educational piece, and then mm -hmm. as community members, I think the other two are going to talk to them as for, as parents of former students in, in their system, what what they believe about the referendum meeting that means for kids. So. So I expect that to happen on the 21st, and then I have uh, Mary. When is the Diversity Alliance meeting? 30th, April 30th. So April 30th, I'll be there, um, and that is a 6:30 meeting, and it says I get only 45 minutes to an hour. Is that right? I don't think they're making that. They'll leave. Okay. <laughs> So you know, it starts as, as Crystal said. It starts getting real when you start looking at these last yeah. few few weeks. And you know, the thing that I think is so important in any uh, school election is that the uh, <clears throat> the good thing that happens out of a referendum election is you get to know the direction of the community. Uh, apathy, though, could be one of the worst things that can happen in a school district where. Um, people believe something's already decided or that their vote maybe isn't important. And so in, in our case, uh, we have 18 polling places set up and uh, we'll have parking arranged in a way so that it's easily accessible. And, and that's, I think, the key that we're asking for. When you make big decisions like we are in the, you know, that affects every single person basically in this community like this election, it's just really important that people come out and uh, give us their opinions, and that's what this this referendum does. It lets us help, you know, set the direction. So, mm -hmm. so for people that are maybe listening to this or will be listening uh, in the future, please vote. Yes, absolutely, please vote. Crystal, I have two questions. Yeah. Um, first one is the building information sessions that were on the prior slide. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming that's run by the building staff mm -hmm. and it's intended. It's targeting the parents of this. It's targeted to parents, but they'll take if you it, yes, they'll take anyone. Yeah, yes, okay. but it's targeted to their specific building yes. and their specific community. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the second question is, uh, I forget the number you indicated in terms of the emails or calls, and that's unimportant. Mm -hmm. Has it been steady? Has it been lumpy? Has it been accelerating? Um, it has. Um, the last couple days accelerated, but I would say only because people are thinking about what how they're going to vote absentee. Yeah. So I think it's kind of getting into that. I've had a lot of absentee ballot questions. Okay. And that information is available on the website? Yeah, so on the website. Mm -hmm. yep. Just go under voting information and scroll down and have all the ways you can do that. Great. <coughs> the handful that I've received tend to be about the technology part of the, of the, the ballot. And it's, um, can you help me understand what the money is used for? Yep. So it's, it's spending the time to talk about it, talk through it, and then in, in my situation anyway, at the end of that, it's, oh, I didn't know that. With that being said, I can be supportive. Um, seems to be the way parents are, are asking those questions. So those are those are great questions, and I, I really appreciate when they ask us and send us that because so many times, like in a technology referendum, what we learned in, from the Burnsville example when they approved theirs, actually they approved their technology levy at a higher rate than even the building bond, and you kind of wonder how does that happen? Well, they they painted and told the story uh, of. Not only is it about the machines, but it's about the training for the people. And then, as is our case, it's actually hiring personnel as well to, to keep things running and operating. And so many times, I think people think, oh, are you gonna buy a million iPads with that money? Because that seems wasteful or whatever. And while devices are a piece of that puzzle, we have three pretty needy areas that we have to take care of. And I think they're all equally as important to be so those are the things that I've been hearing in the last week or yeah, so. Yeah, and we have a lot of good tools on the website. We have a fact sheet. We have some short, short videos that are out now. Um, a great video about um, coding in the classroom and then um, the conceptual plan for the funding. Of Can you actually, because I was in a reference that I have found it to be very useful, the, that right there. Yeah. On it. This particular. We got that question a lot. Yeah. So yeah. JP laid out in kind of a visual way for people to see what, what this money would be spent on. I would just call that to everyone's attention that if they have questions, not that they can't ask the questions, but I think that this is a very informative tool and the people that directed this has been very helpful. I agree, and people who need more detail than even this, JP has been really taking the time to meet with people one-on-one. -on -one. So I would say if you had any questions or concerns about the technology levy that we're here to answer,
answer those questions and we can meet with you and, and chat about the group. Mm -hmm. Crystal, I think, and maybe this is a Crystal and maybe a Sarah question, um, sometimes the results in an election with 18 polling places can take some time. Can you, can you give us an idea on the election day, May 5th, because we don't have another meeting like this. Yeah, sure. So on May 5th, what happens and what would the, how will the community know how, what the results are from, from the election? Give me some ideas on timing and where they would look or go to find the information. So maybe you can talk about physically what happens. Sure. I, I'll talk about what I would, will be doing. Um, I'll be using our communications <coughs> tools, our website, our Facebook, our Twitter to get that information out. And we haven't gotten too far down the road, but maybe even an email to parents and, and subscribers and those who are interested that night. With the results you mean? Yes, yeah. with the unofficial results. Right. But Sarah can talk a little bit more on how that logistic mm -hmm. works if you wanted to go mm -hmm. watch results or that sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, in, in election lingo, um, where the ballots will be counted is Shakti City Hall, um, 129 Home Street. And so they'll be counted in the chambers um, with the assistance of the uh, Shakti City election staff. Um, all of the different 18 polling locations, as you mentioned, all of the head judges and, an, and another judge will bring in their equipment, um, including their results. So that, that will take a little bit of time, especially if they're coming from Savage, Prior Lake, for instance. So that'll take a little bit of time. Um, we don't anticipate it'll take a long time for the polls to close, so the 18 locations. Um, with less voters per precinct, that precinct will be able to close quicker. Um, but it's still gonna take some time for them to make sure all their election paperwork is in order, pack, the, pack their supplies up, and take it to the Shakti City Hall. Um, from there then, the election clerk at City Hall and I will be accepting results and beginning to tabulate them side by side. And if someone were going to follow then through various social media and website, they could expect unofficial results somewhere maybe around 10 o'clock maybe? 10, um, 10, 11, it might be closer to 10, 30. Okay. Um, people are always, the public's always welcome to come and observe the process. Um, the process will occur in the, uh, I believe it's council chambers is the proper um, uh, name for the space. And people can observe what's going on. They're, they're, um, as an election process, they're not possible, it's not possible for them to um, be immediately observing it right over the top, but they can, they're certainly welcome to come and observe the process. Yeah, it'll probably be a late night. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Crystal. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right, we'll move on with Dr. Bezik's going to talk to you about the <coughs> first reading of the policy. <coughs> <coughs> the 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 I can jump on the screen. Here to talk about the uh, policy 518, the DNR, DNI, which is do not resuscitate, do not incubate orders. Uh, it feels like we've talked about this a number of times, but this is actually the first meeting that we're having at, uh, at, the, at of this uh, policy change. And uh, we had a, uh, some parents uh, come to us and request a change in our policy. Uh, you know, uh, in this last fall. I listened to them and uh, we called our policy committee together and we, we looked at this and we actually, you know, we had a lot of discussion about this. So some committee of the board looked at it and we actually came back with uh, a first draft that uh, um, we thought was making a move in the right direction, but you know, on further discussion with uh, the family, our school nurses, uh, and other school districts around the area, we said, you know what, we're gonna take another look at this. It's a real sensitive issue and uh, you know, there's some uh, good information shared by the, the family by, uh, and by others that we reached out to. And uh, the policy committee uh, decided that, you know what, we are going to uh, take a little, another step uh, closer to, uh, well, we're actually going to uh, allow these orders to be accepted in certain circumstances. And you can see, you know, I think we passed out a copy of the policy, but as you're looking at these policies, when they're being revised, the uh, the uh, underlining is uh, new verbiage and the strikeout is uh, old verbiage as taken out. And uh, 
if you look at that first section there, uh, basically, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but pieces that stand out to me are that uh, what the one statement is that while we feel that these decisions are best made by a physician, uh, there are certain circumstances where school nurses and school personnel are able to accept and honor verified DNR, DNI orders. So we would actually allow the school district to accept these. Our old policy said not only would we not accept them, we wouldn't even relay that information to uh, uh, emergency medical that <coughs> came uh, to the school district. And that, we, we felt that, that was maybe a little outdated and a little restrictive. So uh, that was a, a lot of our discussion uh, kind of started at that point. If you look under the, the next section here, uh, I think uh, in talking with our, our policy committee and uh, talking with other professionals that are out there and talking with actually our school district attorney as well that advises us on things, we said, you know, the thing was, how do we make sure that uh, we honor the wishes of the DNR, but we also don't put other people that aren't qualified to make that decision in, in a spot where they would have to make a tough call. So uh, the policy states in the second section, basically, that uh, any normal personnel that would come upon a student in a medical situation would, would take reasonable care to, to meet the needs of sustaining life of that student. In a rare circumstance where a student has a DNR, a nurse would be aware of that. If they came upon the situation, they would be able to say, hey, I'm here now, I'm taking care of, you know, I'm in charge of the situation, and they would be able to make that, they'd be, in, a, in essence, relieve that person of that responsibility. And they would also be able to relay that information to emergency medical personnel when they came on the scene. So that's probably one of the, the biggest changes. And in Section C, again, a lot of the things were, were struck out, but again, this says basically that uh, we could, again, notify medical emergency personnel. And then in Section E, again, it talks about how that meeting is held, that the, that the, uh, the parents will meet with the uh, school district personnel and uh, present that, that order that they have from their medical practitioner and that uh, a plan would then be devised and laid out on how this would happen, how this would be put on record. And again, these are very rare circumstances. I, you know, I think we only may have one or two in the district at this time. So, you know, sometimes people were, when in some of our discussions, people were like, well, could somebody be confused by this? Well, usually these are students with such high need that they have a nurse that is well aware of their specific uh, medical needs. So, you know, even though those discussions were had, I think the committee and, and others felt you know, that's a, an acceptable level of risk for us to honor the wishes of families in a you know, very difficult decision like this. So we felt that, that was the right thing to do. Uh, the other procedural pieces, and there's a typo that Barb was so happy to point out on getting that changed. Uh, the, uh, the other procedural pieces that are in there are how to, again, notify that DNR that it is in place, and then also if it would ever be, uh, <coughs> uh, parents would want to make a change or pull that, that they have to provide us with written documentation so that, again, things are very clear. So we feel, uh, I believe the policy committee, and I, I forward this to the board as well, we feel that this uh, meets the, the spirit of what we were comfortable with. And, and it took, again, it took a lot of, a lot of conversation, a lot of, uh, a lot of soul searching by people to say, you know, is this something that we would be comfortable with? And uh, I, I feel we've reached that point. Uh, we've shared it with the, the nursing staff as well. Uh, I've shared it with the, uh, the family that raised the issue. So I, I think we're at a point where we're, we've landed in a, in a, uh, in a good spot. And that, again, it wasn't easy to get there. It was a lot of conversation, but the, but that's all right as well. It was healthy conversation. It was respectful conversation, and I think we again will end up in a spot where we can all feel good about the policy that we we put in, or proposing here. So, well, if there are any questions at this time, well, let's. Uh, I'll accept the motion to accept the first reading so we can get to mm -hmm. the discussion point. We have a motion. I'll make that motion. Second. 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 Okay. Um, questions or comments for John on the policy as a whole? Just to go on what John said, um, we all realized that this was a, literally a life and death decision, and it was a difficult decision for the parents to make, and we 
will do our best to honor their wishes. And it is so rare that chances are anybody not knowing that the, that the student has that DNI or DNI or their if they're examiner. And so we're going to be risk. There's a risk if we don't follow it. second that too because we had a pretty powerful conversation with a lot of asks and a lot of would you at least listen and consider at that learning session and I hoped it would turn out this way but I'm not directly on the, that subcommittee but um, thank you for listening and taking those extra steps like Angela said that's 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 hard work so thank you I've missed that uh, learning session so I was part of that discussion and I'm not on the policy committee so I also have not uh, been intimate with this topic but when I read it I was very pleased I thought this was a good balanced response I think hopefully it meets the interest of the parents as well as the district I have one question uh, and it's for those on the policy committee or John you can speak to this when I read this again just from a, a third party viewpoint I won't say it's missing, but I wondered about a requirement that the DNR DNI be updated or reconfirmed annually in writing. The way I read this now, it says it's put in place, and I, I guess I interpret that to mean it's going to be in place until it's rescinded. But I would think there could be changes in health or what have you, and should we as a district say, if we're going to have this in place, let's just each year check in and make sure that that's something we want to continue, or the, the parents in this case want to continue. Was that discussed? Was that thought of? So that would take care of that. So we'd be able to reconfirm formally that that is to continue in the interest of the parents. Obviously, the health plan would change. I'll ask. I'll, uh, it just doesn't call. I'll, I'll ask uh, Peter Martin, our attorney that drafted this up, also ask him that question. Yeah. And uh, if uh, it may be if you it should be in place until you send it. You go through each when you go through an IP. You go through each of the requirements you currently have. So they would absolutely be looking at that. Okay. I will ask right, just, so you know, <coughs> just to pipe in from, as the director of special ed, that is true. We would have to look at that every year. The health plan is part of that. So that would be one of the points we make sure to get for each year. Good. Okay. Any other questions or comments for John? All right. At this point, we will uh, vote to accept the first reading of the policies presented. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Right. Those opposed? We've accepted that as the first reading. Thank you, John, very much. And again, thank you to the committee, John, parents, all those who've been involved in this uh, delicate topic. Thank you. All right, we'll move on to item 6.3. Mike, do you want to come on up? I think he prefers Hollywood. Yes, he got a lot of FaceTime in that video. Oh, that was <laughs> goodness. <laughs> We were all at it too, we? I'm ready for my screen test, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, well, that's my next, that's my next job. Uh, here today to talk about uh, the kind of the calendar and look at the budget as we're uh, moving forward and putting together uh, our report for the learning session next Two weeks from uh, today, we'll be talking about budget and uh, self-funding. Medical insurance will be two of the big financial items that we have on the board or on the agenda for that uh, night. And uh, just 
as we're, as we're looking at the budget, some of the things that we're incorporating that we've talked about in learning sessions, we've talked about in general, we've talked about at reports from some of our different uh, cabinet members are, uh, in, in, we're incorporating many of those changes, uh, 150 more students at the high school next year, just ninth graders moving up and uh, seniors graduating, 150 more kids. Uh, study hall changes across the secondary levels. We, you know, shorten the amount of study hall time that's available. So that is gonna uh, cause some secondary staff increases. Uh, we will receive more integration and achievement revenue. Uh, we made that levy last fall. <clears throat> that would be for this 2015-16 uh, fiscal year. So coming up, uh, we've got a few things that we're shifting around. <coughs> Do some of the other things that we've talked about, counselors. Uh, we're uh, uh, implementing a young scholars program where we've talked about young scholars, and and we'll talk about that at, at the meeting on the 20th. I want to say 23rd, but I think that's 27th. 27th, yeah, right, 27th. And, and so uh, we've talked about the technology based plan and how we're paying for some of those. Uh, Next year's plan, uh, our preferred plan would coincide more with the what we've talked about in the uh, with the referendum. Uh, but our base plan, there's some minimum things that we're talking about that we need to implement. Uh, six, seventh graders uh, moving from sixth grade to seventh grade, so need iPads there or whatever devices we're getting. <coughs> But it was just the technology plan that uh, JP's brought forward to you in the past. Uh, then, then we're also looking at some of the legislative changes that are out there. 1% uh, on the formula is $500,000 in revenue to the school district. So 3%, like some of our, our groups want to see, would be a million five. That'd be nice and you'd be able to do a few different things, but, but we don't know where that's landing and currently I'm still budgeting at about a 1% increase each of the two years, so 500,000 in 16 and 500,000 in 17. Uh, preschool change, you've heard a lot about the governor's plan for preschool change. What does that really include? And the, the nuts and bolts of it looks like, uh, much like they did kindergarten, uh, base year planning. So plan for, in 15, 16, there's planning to do and, and get a program in place. 1617 uh, would be the rollout year. So there's probably very little money available for next year for preschool, new money available for preschool, but then you could look at rolling it out in, in the following year. Whatever that is, whatever uh, we determine our plan is. And then we, we've seen some election language out there uh, about moving all school district elections that generate money, so a bond election. We couldn't do this in May 5th, only on the second, or the first Tuesday after the first Monday in November. So they're thinking about putting all referendums, all technology, uh, you know, capital planning uh, referendums uh, out November only, much like the operating referendum. So there's a bunch, those things are all out there, won't really affect us necessarily. Uh, it would affect us possibly if, you know, uh, things kind of, it's just got to work out. And it'll be what it'll be, but uh, hopefully uh, we can get at least that 1% on the formula from the legislature. Uh, we would uh, bring, after the 23rd, any other changes that the board would plan or, uh, you know, give us, send us in a different direction. Uh, we uh, try and uh, roll those into our uh, preliminary budget for approval on May 11th, and then uh, adoption of the uh, uh, final budget uh, for the fiscal 2016 year on uh, June 8th. That would be the calendar as it stands. I'm also uh, <coughs> working with, uh, uh, which is a little bit more out for the planning purposes uh, in. June, July, and August, we'll be working with uh, schoolfinance.com to do a little bit more on a five-year plan, uh, trying to 
incorporate the governor and legislative changes and just try and give us a better look look forward and and like planning and enrollment planning and in these uh, finances all based on enrollment it's very it will be a difficult thing to project and and how much do you add for um, you know additions and how much you know all those things that we have kind of built into this new election how do we uh, how do we plan them and build them into a, a, a uh, five-year plan and then that would roll forward every year so uh, kind of look back at what we've done uh, project what we're also, on the uh, one other thing that we're working on uh, with uh, uh, Scott here and his uh, group and HR is the uh, we were required to bid our health insurance. So it's Health Insurance Transparency Act. Uh, every two years now, we're required to bid our health insurance. Uh, again, we're talking about looking at uh, possibly moving to self-insured. Our group uh, had the preliminary bids, uh, opened those. Uh, we had our final best and final offer bid uh, last Thursday. We went over that information today, now we'll meet again. Uh, <clears throat> it might require us to change uh, uh, providers, and so we have to look at all that uh, network stuff and make sure we're uh, apples to apples and we have to uh, run it through our union. We have a union insurance committee that, well, and it's an insurance committee, not only union, but bargaining groups are represented, and, and we talk about the advantages and disadvantages of uh, self insurance and uh, uh, providers. So, we're working on that, and that'll again be part of our meeting on the 23rd uh, to bring you up to date. And we'll have George uh, from Corporate Health Systems in, and he will kind of give us uh, a process and what it would look like if we went self insured. The best thing about going self insured is you save. 5% of the taxes that are on uh, fully insured groups, so uh, that that reduces the amount that the uh, uh, you know the group would pay uh, in, in uh, premiums. So that's that was one of our, our main reasons for looking at going in that direction. The other the other reason we're looking at it is <laughs> makes sense, and instead of paying the insurance companies. Try to keep it in our own funds and separate it into a separate trust agreement. So. Any questions? Like I had one just in light of what you said. Uh, if it required a change in networks, providers to go self insure, do we ever have we done any kind of uh, employee satisfaction survey of our healthcare in particular? So I don't know if we have, but just say for Medica and folks are. Fed up with Medica, they might welcome a change versus they're ecstatic with Medica, so making a change could really upset the apple cart. Have we ever done a, a survey like that with our employees? I don't believe we have. Have we? Not, I'm not aware. Not that, okay. and not that I'm aware of either. Um, but typically, any change like this uh, needs to. <laughs> we'll be bringing it to different. Uh, yeah. Each bargaining group will have multiple, multiple meetings to talk about it. But we don't have any data to fall back on to say no. we know people are fit. No, and uh, we don't know that right now. Okay. So we have all that to look forward to in the 27th. Yep. Busy, busy. And then the 27th, and then we'll have a, if, if we do change providers or change self insurance, we'll have an action item on a May, May 11th. Do we have any old business action items, new business, new business action items? <coughs> All right. Before you go on through this, any committee reports? Uh, yes, the Southwest Metro Co op got accepted into the innovation zone that they're working with the majority of schools, and it's so similar to our academies that it's almost like sitting in the same board meeting. <laughs> Uh, also, our request to become an intermediate is on the Senate Omnibus Bill, and somewhere floating in the House, I don't know where it is on the other side, but we've got our fingers crossed that if, if it doesn't go through the House, it'll be brought up and then meet and do the, the part of the agency. Right. And hopefully we'll look at um, accepting that if it actually turns 
about to be a net gain as far as um, not, you know, it's net, you know, I'm trying to best explain it. When it costs people less money, it's a, a fiscal positive for taxpayers by doing a, um, an intermediate as opposed to a cooperative. Don't ask me how that works, but that's what the budget office said. It's actually going to save taxpayers money. So we haven't gotten any. Yeah. <coughs> we have not gotten any, any, anybody upset with it or questioning each other with it. This is, it's been going through quite quickly. Other committee reports. Rod or John, do you have anything from I don't have any additional. Put in a plug for the uh, Shockby Alumni Association, the inaugural gala at Turtles on the 24th. Tickets are still available online. Uh, hopefully people can make it. It's a silent auction, a fundraiser for a, a great group that we're trying to get started. Um, hopefully have some impact in the schools and the community. Yeah. Okay. Could, could I just uh, point out uh, the, the, the Shockby Alumni Association itself is new, but you don't have to be an alum to come to this event. The fundraiser is for the uh, the association and the angel fund for kids but i think there's a little bit of a misunderstanding in the community that maybe you had to be an alum to, to participate not at all we're welcoming anyone who'd like to be a, a part of that event right. Right. well i wanted to thank all the volunteers since it's national volunteer week for yeah. all the hours that they give to the district looking ahead, Mary kind of indicated what I think we all should do, which is recognize all the various volunteers this entire week for all the wonderful things they do. They very nicely left us a little pen in recognition, but we thank them, certainly, for all that they do that goes unnoticed and unappreciated. We should, should not let that happen. Um, several things coming up. I won't read through them, but our next board meeting is the <coughs> seven. We have teacher appreciation coming up soon as well, so you keep that in mind including Teacher Appreciation Day, the same day as our other, that's a coincidence. And then uh, the next board meeting on May 11th. Anything else? With that, I will accept the motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. 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 Second.